Hello and welcome to Tour Obscure episode number seven and today we are in Sheffield to look at the Lost Village of Partwood Springs. Just through that bridge there that is the entranceway to the old Partwood Springs village itself. Now this was once a thriving community. It had its own pub, its own church and it was all centered around the industry around this area. Built on a hillside overlooking North Sheffield was the village of Partwood Springs. This place was once a close-knit community of working class people, but by the 1970s the area was declared a slum by the local authorities. Compulsory purchase orders were put in place and slowly Partwood Springs started to disappear. By the late 1970s very little of this once thriving community remained. Today, the area still isn't fully redeveloped, leaving behind some ghostly reminders of a place thousands of people once called home. So this is where we begin, on Bardwell Road. And just on the other side of this bridge is when it becomes Douglas Road, and you would have entered the village of Partwood Springs. So for those of you at home, I want to make this video as interesting as possible, obviously. But for me, there's a personal connection to this place. Because where the green fence is just behind me, there was a row of terraced houses. And in one of them houses is where my grandfather David was born. He was brought upon this very estate. And then just a bit further up on the corner, just there, there was a shop. And my great grandmother actually ran that shop for a period of time. So it's a very interesting place anyway, regardless. But for me, doing this video, I'm uh, exploring a bit of my family history as well. So this is the site of the former Partwood Hotel. But that's what it looks like today. And I'm not sure of the exact circumstances of this driveway here, but you can see there, but there's a, a divide where a new wall's been built. So I would imagine that that is a new part of wall, what was built when the pub was demolished. And again, information's very limited on this place. But just here, we've got some bricked up entrances to something, whatever that was. I would imagine it was something to do with the railway being so close to the railway line there. And then interestingly, further down, we've got like a small little arch, what's been bricked up as well. But I'm not sure what this would have been used for. And it's obvious that's been bricked up more recent than the other one, as uh, breeze blocks have been used for that, as opposed to the older looking stones on the doorway up there. So we've just reached what is now the end of Douglas Road. You can see just behind me where the pub was, where we've just been. And the road would have continued all the way up, but now it's blocked off by big green fences. But there's a couple of gaps in fences, so we're gonna jump across and we're gonna follow the route of the old road all the way up and see what we can find. So just over the other side of the fence now, there is a footpath and it looks like tarmac. So I believe this would have been part of the road, but the rest of it's all overgrown. But it doesn't take as long to find evidence of this former village. That's uh, obviously part of an old lamppost. Just trying to follow up maps best I can, but obviously the area has changed so much. And I've reached a dividing line in paths. The one goes up that way, one goes up that way. So I'm just trying to figure out 
the exact route of this road. This looks like tarmac to me, so I think we're on the right path here. So we've just got about halfway up Douglas Road and unfortunately I can't go any further because there's a huge mound of earth in the way. So I can't possibly follow the old track of the road any further. But as we've got to the top, there is some more structures here. And I can only imagine that these are from something to do with the ski village. It's uh, the same type of design. It, there are a lot of wood design buildings and infrastructure from the ski village. But I couldn't tell you what this was. The part what I'm stood on now looks like some sort of seating area for spectators. But obviously it's been lost to nature now, like the rest of this place. Yeah, this was definitely something to do with Ski Village because you can see there's some sort of fabric on this path. So I would imagine this will bring me out onto the main Ski Village site. Yeah, there's a, a staircase there that would have brought you down to this section of the Ski Village. Yeah, as I suspected, this is the site of the former ski village, which uh, separated Douglas Road. So this is the site of the old ski village. This place deserves a video of its own. So whilst I'm here, I am going to film that episode. So be sure to stick around in the next few days and check that video out. So just as we approach the top of Vale Road, just on your right here, this is the old entrance to the ski village which I've said previously we will uh, explore in another video which will be up in the next couple of days. So this is the top of Vale Road where it meets Mount Road which was the road at the top which cut across the top of the estate and met all of the adjoining roads, Wallace Road, Pickering Road but this uh, is all cut off again now, it's uh, been fenced off large stones in the way. So you can see here the old tarmac from the road and then it just slowly disappears. And somewhere around this area would have been the recreation ground. And this is where many of the children on the estate would have come to have a kick about, meet up with their friends. My granddad probably spent a lot of time of his childhood on here. But there's uh, nothing left anymore. I've not got a clue what that is. It's like a huge steel tap. So as you can see, Mount Road is still very much intact. Huge mounds of earth to stop cars coming down in the past. But I do believe that this road is where parts of the Full Monty film were shot. Particularly the scene with uh, Lomper in his car when Gaz and Dave are on their little morning jog. And you can just see very faintly, there's still some road markings on Mount Road. And this is probably the best preserved road on this entire site. And this is where it joins up with Pickering Road. Pickering Road would have gone all the way down there and right at the bottom was the Methodist Church. And you can see just under the tarmac there, the old cobbled streets are still buried. 
and go off into the distance there under all the fly tipping and bushes. So I'm just going to go and have a look at the top end of Pickering Road. See if there's anything of any note. Oh wow. Would you look at that? I would uh, quite confidently say that they are bricks from some sorts of houses what were once on this site. Looks like some sort of window ledge there. So this is now Pickering Road which will take us all the way back down to the bottom of the estate. Still some manhole covers in the middle of the road. And if you look just down here, you can see where the curbs bend round. It's obviously an entrance to something. Just as we approach the bottom of Pickering Road, probably the biggest sign but this place was once inhabited by thousands of people an old lamp post just nestled in amongst the trees now so this is the bottom of Pickering Road and again as you can see like most of the roads around here huge mound of earth big steel gates Another manhole cover there. And then possibly the most useless street lamp in the world, as provided by Sheffield City Council. Does anybody want an old keyboard? No? Fantastic. So now we're at the bottom of Pickering Road, and this is where it meets Wallace Road. And just on the corner, just here, there would have been the Methodist Church. Now this church was severely damaged by a bomb in World War II, as you'll see in these pictures. But the church sadly met the same fate as the entire estate and was demolished. And it's now occupied by some sort of steelworks by the looks of it and you can see just there that's the original wall from the old Methodist Church which now forms part of the boundary for this firm so this is now Wallace Road and as you can see behind me again it's been blocked off with mounds of earth and big stones but the road is still there so we're going to continue up that way see what else we can find. So this road, Wallace Road, this leads up to the entrance of the former railway sidings and uh, railway sheds. And that's where my great grandfather actually worked when he lived here so my great grandfather would have walked up this road all them years ago in the 1930s 40s on his way to work every day and uh, now I'm walking on it and it's uh, an abandoned wasteland surrounded by fly tipping crazy to think and again we've got another abandoned street lamp which is uh, slowly been taken over by nature so there you can see parts of some sort of structure not so much a cellar I don't believe but uh, this looks like part of some steps what potentially led up to a house which stood around here 
but this has been like this for around 50 years now so obviously nature's taken over and obviously the bricks from the house which stood here yeah so there would have been houses all the way up this end as well there's uh, an old street lamp there again which has been felled so I do believe that there was a school at the bottom of these steps or this was on the way to the school and uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning every morning Monday to Friday you'd see masses of school children all coming down these stairs on the way to school obviously that school's long since gone I believe it got closed when the estate was in the process of being demolished it was an 800 pupil school and I think by the end there was probably only 20 children attending so at the bottom of the stairs that brings us to the end of Parkwood Springs this would now be Neep's End and all the industry which employed all the people that lived on that estate would have been around this end, all the gas works and the railway sheds just up there quite, quite sad to be honest not from uh, just a personal point of view but obviously thousands of people once called that place home so that is it from Parkwood Springs if you enjoy what we do Make sure to hit that like button, a subscribe would be very much appreciated. And also check out our Buy Me A Coffee, the link is in the description below. And until next time, see you later.